We ended the last video by quoting Peter Drucker on the purpose of a manager. And Drucker defined that purpose as follows. Management can only justify its existence and authority based on the economic results it produces and by using management by objectives. And in doing that, managers are more likely to produce those desired results. In this second management video, we'll talk about three more important purposes of managers, according to Drucker. And those three additional purposes are organizing, motivating and communicating, and measuring performance. So let's begin with organizing, which is a critical task for every manager. According to Drucker, organizing groups of people involves analyzing the activities, decisions, and relations needed between those people classifying the work being done, dividing the work into manageable activities, and further dividing those activities into manageable jobs. Grouping the units and jobs into an organized structure and selecting people for the management of the units and the jobs to be done. But please remember that to effectively divide work and to select the right people requires decentralization, according to Drucker. In other words, to achieve the desired results, it's better to delegate the tasks and by doing so, give employees more power. Although delegation and giving power to employees is necessary, empowering or giving that power to employees can be very difficult to achieve. And it can be difficult to achieve because Empowering employees also means giving them leadership, it also means giving them a clearly defined function to perform, it means giving them more responsibility and the necessary incentives or motivators, and in addition it means giving them rewards, and finally it means giving them status or recognition. And effectively empowering employees also requires high levels of trust by employees in the management and the belief by the management and trust that every individual employee is capable of performing the required tasks. These beliefs might seem obvious to you at first, but more often than not, these simple beliefs are poorly practiced in business today. And according to Drucker, there are many benefits in having empowered employees, so we should pay attention to this idea. And the most important benefit is the satisfaction those employees will gain through their job and the work they're doing. That's important. The third task of the manager, according to Drucker, is to motivate and communicate. And Drucker called this the integrating function of the manager. And effective integration or motivation and communication requires managers to do the following. First, make a team out of people who are responsible for various jobs. Second, tell people what their jobs are. Third, support the team in producing economic goods and services which have an impact on society, people, communities, and the country as a whole. The biggest motivation and communication challenge for a manager, though, according to Drucker, is trying to balance the tension between the work employees carry out and the amount of effort they put into that work. And please remember that this tension or balancing task, work versus effort, is very important for management because achieving the right balance will have a direct impact on performance. This means that the manager must always try to resolve this ever-present work-effort tension. And if a manager cannot resolve the tension, at least they should try to make it as productive as possible. This balancing act is necessary because business performance must come first. It must come first because it's the primary aim of the enterprise and the only reason for existence, and that balance affects that. 
This is a fact because without good performance, companies are unable to make a contribution to the society as a whole or any other issues. And as a matter of fact, making a contribution to societal and other issues is becoming increasingly important for managers. The reason that's happening is because more and more society is looking to business management for leadership on the quality of people's lives. So this means that accountability for the social dimensions of business is in fact part of a manager's task. And to manage that task effectively means that managers must consider the business impact on the community as a neighbor, source of jobs, tax revenue, and contribute as best as possible to the fundamental concern for the quantities of life and the environment around them. But here's an important point to remember, which Drucker reminds us of. If the work and the worker are mismanaged in a business, there will be no business performance. And if there's no business performance, the quality of life will suffer. The fourth task of managers, according to Drucker, is to manage and measure performance. Measuring performance means that managers must establish the appropriate targets and yardsticks in order to analyze, appraise, and interpret the performance. So when you are a manager, this means that you must remember that one of your primary tasks is to measure performance in the here and now. And to do that well, you need to create measurements. And those measurements should be focused on the performance of the whole organization and every individual staff member. You need to analyze and appraise and interpret performance based on those measures that you define and create. And finally, you need to communicate the meaning of the measures and their findings to subordinates or the people who work for you and to your leaders and other managers in your business. When communicating performance, it's very important that you have accurate and understandable data to support your communication. And one very effective way to quantify performance measurement and to make it more understandable for everyone is to use KPIs, or Key Performance Indicators. But in order to use KPIs effectively, you must first select the best KPIs for your specific business activities. Making that selection requires you to define the business processes, or BPs as we say in business, which you're looking at, define the requirements for those business processes, establish quantitative and qualitative measurements of the desired results and the ways to compare those with the goals that you have set, and finally decide how to manage the differences between the goals and achieved measures. Or in other words, how to adjust the processes in order to achieve the desired results. Now, measuring performance and maintaining that performance in the future, and when you're considering the future, you must bring in the element of time into the equation. And you have to do this because time is always important. And the reason it's important is because management must consider both the present and the future, or the short run and the long run, in their decision making. So when doing that, it's important for you to remember that keeping the business or enterprise performing in the present time means that there will be an enterprise capable of performing in the future. But if you allow short-term profits to be the priority at the cost of future financial health of the business, the survival of that business will come into question. And what this important statement means is that one of the most important roles of managers is to make the enterprise or company capable of performance, growth, and change in the future. Because if they can't do that, they have in fact destroyed the capital of the business, or in other words, they've destroyed the capacity of the resources in the business to produce wealth tomorrow. 
taking into account the future raises many challenges because the only thing you and I know about the future is that it's going to be different in some ways. And because of that fact, uncertainty must be taken into account by managers all the time. And this time dimension which is causing uncertainty is a unique and special characteristic of managerial decision making. And it's unique because unlike many other forms of decision making, management decision making involves acting based on present conditions and based on the unknown future. But according to Drucker, despite all of the uncertainty the future brings with it, by ensuring that the enterprise is strong today means that the enterprise will more likely also succeed in the future. So please remember that. And please remember that one of your primary tasks as a manager is to also measure performance in the here and now.